Yo guys, Superior David here. Madness at the Dark Moon Fair is literally just around the corner, which means it's time for me to give you decks that you can play on day one of the expansion because only inferior people jam fully optimized meta decks from the, the previous expansion on day one. And I don't want you guys to be inferior. So I threw together uh, 10 theory crafted decks, one for every class, some are a bit more competitive, while others are a bit more meme-y. Uh, I tried to throw in a little bit of something for everyone, so I hope you enjoy, and if you want to watch me play these decks, you can catch me over on Twitch, where I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Link is down in that description, and now let's get into these decks. So we're starting off with the deck that I'm most excited to play day one, and that is what I'm calling Ramp Clown Druid. Basically, this deck wants to aggressively ramp to play Survival of the Fittest, so we can corrupt Carnival Clown and play a board full of giant clowns with taunts, and, you know, a sentence you don't hear every day. Uh, but anyways, we run a lot of the cards that you've come to expect from these ramp druids uh, throughout the year. But I've decided to cut the Guardian Animals Beast Package here. Uh, Guardian Animals was performing, you know, like, okay after the nurse. But I think we're getting cards that just synergize better with, with what this deck is trying to do. Like the new Corrupt card, Strongman, which I honestly think is one of the best Corrupt cards from the set. Uh, in this deck, he sort of functions like an Anubiseth Defender in that we can uh, play Survival the Fittest and develop a minion in the same turn, which is pretty powerful. Survival the Fittest is usually like a low tempo play, so getting that minion down on the board, just really strong. Uh, or you could also play uh, Strongman alongside uh, another powerful new card, Scenarian Ward, uh, you know, eight drops on average. Pretty good, uh, but playing an 8-drop while also gaining 8 armor, that's pretty freaking awesome. And the Strongman is just like the nice cherry on top of that. Uh, then because we run a lot of spells, we've got King Feoris and uh, good old good old New Yogg-Saron to take advantage of all those spells. Uh, I think both of these together might be a bit on the greedy side, but you know, it's day one. We're having fun with things. Uh, then I'm also running the Umbral Owls for similar reasons, just the spell synergy. I'm not sure how fast we'll be able to like discount them, but we do run a lot of spells, and if we, we can get them down to zero mana, then we can play them alongside Survival the Fittest, which, as we've established, is pretty nutty. Uh, finally, the last new card we run is uh, Kiri, Chosen of a Loon. Uh, you know, let's not sugarcoat it, the stats on this card are bad. Uh, but I like these Solar and Lunar Eclipses, and with Kiri, you can run both in your deck while only taking up uh, one card slot. So I feel like from a deck building perspective, it's a really efficient card. I'm interested to see it like like if this card is any good at all i'll let you know now moving on we have the deck that i'm most excited to play after ramp clown druid and that is evolve shaman uh or maybe we call this deck revolve shaman now i don't know let me know down in the comments guys uh but yeah there was an evolve shaman list running around during skullman's academy that was it was okay i i played a little bit and the deck basically uh, boiled down to uh draw box by knuckles or you lose and shaman has horrible card draw so there was a lot of losing uh, but someone at Blizzard must have taken notice because Shaman got an insanely powerful card in Dark Moon Fair, uh, and that is Cage Match Custodian, which uh, allows Shaman to tutor a weapon. Uh, so we run it in this deck, of course, and now we can more reliably get our box by Knuckles. And I think that's going to make this deck a lot more viable because we can like more consistently evolve stuff now, which is like that's like the thing this deck wants to do. And with the box by Knuckle becoming more consistent, a card like Horde Pillager seems a lot better in this list. So you can keep recurring the weapon, and you know Horde Pillager itself is a decent evolve target. So we run two copies of them. Uh, then we also run the new spell, uh, Revolve, which I think is good. While it's not as powerful as Evolve in terms of upgrading your own board, you know, I think uh, playing it alongside Desert Hair is still going to be pretty good. And then it also disrupts your opponent's board, which is uh, pretty good against uh, Paladin and Priest. Uh, finally, for new cards, we run Pitmaster, which I'm not totally sure about. You know, it's decent on its own in an Evolve deck, but the important aspect of this card is that it allows us to go wide earlier to cheat out a Mogu Flesh Shaper and... If you were around for the dreaded Evolve Shaman meta, you know how powerful uh, Mogu Flesh Shaper into Mutate is. Uh, so yeah, I'm really excited for this deck, and I, I think this is Shaman's time to shine. Uh, I say that every expansion, but this time I really do mean it. Okay, now next up we've got Paladin, and you know, I think Pierre and Broom Paladin will still be good with relatively unchanged lists, so I want to give you guys something a little spicier, so here is a big Paladin. Uh, I was inspired to make this list because I encountered this dude in like top 200 legend jamming a big paladin, which, you know, it's big paladin. I totally scoffed at it, but the deck actually performed pretty well and he beat me. So just don't sleep on this archetype. I feel like it's actually like almost there. It might even be there, but people just don't play it. Uh, and, you know, big decks are all about cheating out those big old minions to overwhelm your opponent before they can deal with them. And the big minions we're running here are Tyrion, Plague Proto Drake, 
Colossus of the Moon and Scrapyard Colossus because these minions are all pretty good when pulled off of Duel. They either have Divine Shield for the value trades or they leave a body behind when they die. Uh, then for other minions, I guess the only other minion we run is Archmage Bargoth to get more value from the many spells we run. One of which is the new spell Snack Run. Uh, this is basically the spell version of another very solid Paladin card, Ivory Knight. Uh, but because Snack Run is a spell, it doesn't mess with our big deck synergy, which is very important. Uh, and I think this kind of slower Paladin deck wants both the healing and the flexibility to generate a card for the, like any given situation. Uh, you can get additional copies of Commencement or Duel or even Removal if you need it. So it seems like Snack Run is perfect for this deck. Uh, it just seems like a solid card overall. Uh, then the other new card we run is Hammer of the Naru. I think Paladin as a class will really like this card because Paladin doesn't have like many ways to generate tempo, but Hammer of the Naru allows Paladin to develop a mid-range body on the board with uh, Taunt, which is you know that's that's pretty good uh and then the weapon allows paladin to like clear off another minion so it's just a lot of tempo it's like this is a very very unusual thing for paladin to do but you know i'm cool with it uh then the bonus for uh big paladin with this card is that hammer the naru does all this without messing with our big deck synergy which i'm very happy about because as you guys know i still like big decks and i cannot lie so like i said i feel like this deck might have actually been there before this expansion but it's getting like a couple key cards that i think will really elevate it and push it over the top so again don't sleep on this deck. I think it will actually be good. You know, some people just want to smork and have their games be done within a matter of turns. And for those people, I've got a secret face hunter over here. Uh, this list isn't too crazy. It sort of builds upon the Skullmance Academy iteration of the deck. Uh, and it also happens to be a bit more on the budget side with the most expensive card being the two copies of Snake Trap. And uh, yes, I think you actually do want to be running Snake Trap uh, in Face Hunter now because of the synergy with the new uh, Hunter Secret Open the Cages. Uh, which requires you to have two minions on the board for it to proc. Uh, and the effect is powerful, especially because we can cheat this and any of our secrets out with Phase Stalker or the new neutral card, Inconspicuous Rider. Uh, you never really want to play secrets from hand with this deck, which is why we don't run the Mystery Winner. I think it's a total bait card when building Secret Face Hunter. So, you know, just, if you don't believe me, prove me wrong. But a different new card that I'm really excited about is Petting Zoo. Uh, even if you only have one secret down, summoning two 3-3s three for three mana is nuts. And anything more is just so backbreaking for any deck to deal with. You probably just win the game on the spot. And then originally I was uh, also running the new legendary weapon, uh, Rindling's Rifle, but I think it has a bit of anti-synergy with Eaglehorn's Bow, which seems like the better weapon for a face deck in my opinion. Uh, but you know, if you pull the uh, Rindling's Rifle from a pack and you really want to be spicy and play it, you could swap it out with like a kill command and I think the deck will still function. And in typical face hunter fashion, two seconds, boom, we're done with the deck. Now we're moving on to mage. Uh, I didn't really want to uh, theory craft a secret mage since I, I just theory crafted a secret hunter. So I decided to brew instead an elemental small spell mage. Uh, the big uh, trap that I foresee with Elemental Mage on day one is people trying to approach it like a traditional tribal deck by jamming in like all the Elementals, which frankly has never worked with the current pool of Elementals in Standard. And, uh, you know, not to say it won't work, but I find it very unlikely that the new Elementals are going to change this. Uh, I think the better kind of deck will be a small spell mage that sort of like trims the more extraneous cards and focuses more on the uh, Elementals to enhance what the deck already does well. So that's what I've got here. Uh, and we all know the scam potential of this deck, so I'm going to just focus more on the elemental synergies. First up, we hard run elemental allies to efficiently draw spells, and I think we could afford to do this now due to the Confection Cyclone, which frankly seems like the all-star of this deck. Uh, not only does the Confection Cyclone proc the side quest on its own due to uh, generating the sugar elementals, uh, but those sugar elementals also discount our mana giants so we could cheat them out even faster, and then they also fuel our grand finale. Uh, so just really, really strong stuff. Uh, you'll notice that I'm only playing one grand finale though because I'm not sure if this deck really has enough elementals to get value from two. And it's also like, you know, it's eight mana. It's expensive. Uh, I mean, like, you know, worst comes to worst, we could probably like generate another one knowing this deck. But I, I don't know, like eight mana is a lot for a card. So I'm going to try running one. Maybe we'll switch to two if uh, it seems like we could get like, you know, consistently get like, you know, three, four elementals on the board. Uh, but we do run another finisher though in the form of yogg -Saron because... We run a ton of spells, so how could we not play New Yog Saron? Uh, but overall, unless the meta is like hyper aggressive day one, I think this deck will be pretty competitive if you're looking to climb, so definitely check it out. Now, next up, we've got Rogue, and if you watch my stream, you know that I absolutely hate Galakron Rogue, which I unfortunately think will be the dominant Rogue archetype, so I wanted to give you guys something different. So here is a C'Thun Tempo Rogue. Uh, basically, I just sort of took what I thought would be a decent Tempo Rogue and put in C'Thun to sort of function as a win condition in slower matchups, which, you know, like non galakron Tempo Rogues tr traditionally struggle against. Uh, we've got the usual suspects in this deck, but as for uh, new cards, we've got Ten Wu of the Red Smoke and Grand Empress 
Shek Zara. Okay, that's that's a that's a I'm never gonna get that one right. Uh, both of which I think just go into most rogue decks until they rotate. Uh, they're both naturally good and don't have much of a deck building cost to them. Uh, then we've got the Ticket Master, which has synergy with Stowaway, but has anti synergy with Cthum because it shuffles more cards into our deck, making Stowaway like not consistently draw Cthum pieces. And this might seem like a weird addition to the deck for that reason, but my thinking is that in faster matchups, you don't really care about completing Cthum and would rather get the Bears to contest the board. And then in slower matchups, uh, you probably just draw through your deck anyways, and the like anti synergy won't be an issue because you're just still drawing cards. Uh, plus, shuffling more cards into our deck keeps the new spell Malevolent Strike cheap, which I think is important to winning uh, games against more aggressive decks. Uh, by the way, in case like you aren't aware, at the start of the game, Cthulhu breaks into uh, four pieces and they shuffle into your deck. So Malevolent Strike costs one mana until you like start drawing Cthulhu pieces, which is the reason why I really want to uh, go about building Cthulhu Rogue. Uh, it's just a really cool interaction. And, you know, I don't know if this deck will actually, like, materialize into something. I'm sure, like, you know, it's just going to be Galakrond Rogue. But I think this could be fun, and I'm really excited to check it out day one. And speaking of cool decks that may or may not materialize, uh, this next deck is probably more of a meme deck, but I think it's so cool, and I really hope it works. And that is uh, Mill Warlock. Uh, basically, this deck wants to corrupt the new Warlock legendary uh, Takadis, a.k.a. Thick Addis, and then copy it with Philosophy to uh, keep removing cards from our opponent's deck until they have nothing left and take Fatigue damage. And if that's not enough, we also run the Yasharaj to get even more copies of Takadis. Uh, frankly, all this together is probably overkill, but personally, I think it's really funny and it's day one, so why not go all out with these ridiculous combos and interactions? Uh, because we run Yasharaj, I decided to throw in a couple of the other corrupt cards. Uh, we've got, you know, good old Strongman, which I think is just going to be like the the so good uh it's it's not it's like not only good after playing like twisting nether in this deck which i decided to run two of because like you know twisting nether is normally like another low tempo play you clear the board but you're not developing anything but now you can clear the board develop the strongman very powerful but you can also play the strongman alongside an alex straza which you know that's really good for like a defensive alex straza against like a more aggressive deck where you're like oh no i gotta heal up and sometimes like the alex is enough but you also get that taunt down so maybe you have a better chance of living now uh, then we also run the Cascading Disasters, uh, because it seems like okay removal, and if you corrupt it once, you know, awesome. And if you can do it twice, even better, but it seems really good when you play it alongside the Yasharaj just to, like, generate some more tempo. Uh, and then we round out this deck with, like, you know, your typical Warlock Dragon Synergy package fe featuring uh, Moarg Artificer and Nether Breath for the big heals. And then we've also got a Soul Fragment package for more removal and additional, like, little bits of healing throughout the game, probably probably need that for aggro matchups and you know that's the deck i hope it works but will it work eh, we'll find out now moving on to everyone's favorite class priest i decided to do a theory craft of everyone's favorite archetype for priest and that is res priest uh but no i know everyone really hates this archetype but i actually do really enjoy it because uh flavor wise it actually feels like a priest deck to me not like these like randomly generate cards forever sort of decks and you know it seems to be getting some like really interesting tools so i'm really excited to play this deck uh first it's getting idol of yasharaj and blood of goon which I, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, but uh, both these cards uh, summon copies of minions from, from your deck. Uh, Res Priest loves these kinds of effects because it helps put minions into your res pool, but the card is still in your deck so you can play it later, and you're not like going into fatigue any faster. Uh, then we also have a new spell, uh, Palm Reading, that seems exceptionally good in Res Priest because we run some pretty expensive spells that we would love to discount, like the aforementioned Idol of Yasharaj and, the, and of course, Mass Resurrection. Uh, but honestly, I think the best card in the deck is the new spell Insight. At two mana, it's super easy to corrupt, and then you can guarantee draw a minion. Sometimes with Res Priest, you get into these situations where you have like all your resurrection effects, but no minions in your res pool. So Insight will help immensely in those situations. And you know, I know, I know this card seems really innocuous, but I think it's really powerful and will eventually do something broken in Priest. If not in Res Priest, there will be like some sort of combo priest in the future that will break this card. Uh, but yeah, thank you for your patience for bearing with me with this deck you probably hate. Or maybe I'm maybe I'm just being very critical of the deck. I don't know. Whenever I mention it, people are just always just like, Bleh, Res Priest. But uh, let me know down in the comments if you like the deck. It'd be nice to know these things. Okay, next up we've got Demon Hunter. And I think that Soul Demon Hunter is probably to still be like pretty good next expansion. But I think a lot of people just want to play some different form of Demon Hunter at this point. I tried theory crafting token Demon Hunter. Didn't seem really good. Even from a meme perspective, I feel like it's just not a good deck. So I decided to just theorycraft an aggro Demon Hunter for you guys. Uh, the archetype got some new toys that I think can make it even more aggressive. It might actually be enough to bring it back, especially if there's like some meta shifts, which, you know, usually happen with expansions. Uh, the big new card this deck is getting is Stilt Stepper. It's 
card draw and we run a ton of cheap cards so it's very likely you'll be able to play the stilt stepper and like you know play a cheap card after it to get that additional four damage in at preferably your opponent's face or maybe you know, take a value trade to like keep your minions alive or something i was originally like lukewarm on this card but it's definitely been growing on me the more i talk about it uh then we run the neutral card uh wriggling horror which i think a lot of people are sleeping on at least i haven't heard many people talk about it it's basically the two mana equivalent of Fungal Mancer, which was a meta warping card in its time. So I'm pretty bullish on Wriggling Horror. Uh, I think every aggressive board based deck will eventually be running uh, the, the Wriggling Horror. And it works exceptionally well in this aggro Demon Hunter list because this deck wants to snowball hard. Uh, I think the rest of this list is pretty much like what you'd expect from an aggro Demon Hunter at this point. We're not exactly reinventing the wheel here, but aggro decks tend to do uh, better day one so if you're looking to like rank up this might be a nice deck to try out and you know let me know how good how well uh stilt stepper performs because I'm, I'm actually quite curious uh but if you're looking for something meme i know some people are like oh you know aggro demon hunter that that's not meme enough uh i'll have a link to a C'Thun yogg demon hunter list that i i sort of just theory crafted for lulz that'll be down in the description so you know you get a little bonus deck there i just you know I, i'm just not going to go into it because i don't i don't think it's going to be very good either but at least that deck is fun um, so yeah, now moving on. Last but certainly not least, we've got Warrior. Uh, there are so many ways you could take Warrior right now, and in the end, I decided to go in a more like fun direction that incorporates more of the new cards. So I theory crafted a Menagerie Taunt Nazoth Warrior. Uh, basically, we play a bunch of taunt minions from different tribes and use the taunt buff spells into the fray and the new feat of strength in combination with the uh, new warrior weapon, Ringmaster's Baton, to make them really big and run our opponent out of resources. Then we swoop in with Nazoth and uh, get a board full of taunts and sort of snowball that to victory. A key card in this deck is the new Circus Amalgam. Uh, because we run so many tribes, we can't really like devote as many minions as we'd like to each tribe. And like you know, some tribes just have bad minions. So uh, Circus Amalgam helps fill in those gaps because it's 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 literally every tribe. It's the Swiss Army knife of like tribal Hearthstone cards. Uh, then as for other cards, uh, we've got the new Sword Eater. Um, which might not be the best taunt to bring back with Nazoth, but that battle cry with those stats for that mana cost is insanely good. I didn't even like realize this was a card until I was like building this deck and I was just like, wait a second, this card's really good. Uh, but anyways, yes, this can help with mid game tempo. The the weapon allows us to like throw something off, and it will, that will allow, like pave the way for us to get down those mid range taunt minions going forward. Uh, then for more tempo, we've got the tenth thrasher, which. I wasn't entirely sure about including this list. Uh, it doesn't have taunt, but I think it's reasonable tempo and we could use more dragons. Like I didn't want to include Deathwing because we're a board-based deck and there's anti-synergy there. Deathwing just clears off our board. We don't really want that. Uh, I think Evasive Draconid, you know, you could consider that, but I think it's a bit too slow. I think this sort of deck, you know, that buffs taunt minions would rather play like cheaper taunts than and like buff them up to be overstated minions for the cost. I think that's just a bit better with what this deck's trying to do, but you know, I could be wrong there. Uh, then finally, we got the new Warrior Legendary Ringmaster Watley for card draw. You know, I wouldn't say he's the most extravagant legendary. You know, he just, he's just, you know, card draw legendary. But, you know, he gets the job done for this deck. And that's what's important, getting the job done. And there you have it, guys. We just got the job done. Ten superior decks that you could play day one of Madness at the Dark Moon Fair. Uh, let me know down in the comments what you'll be playing day one. And uh, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more superior Hearthstone content. It really does help me out with the YouTube algorithm. Uh, thanks so much for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. I hope you all have incredibly superior day ones of Madness at the Dark Moon Fair. Always the best part of an expansion. But yeah, have a good one. I'll see you in the next one. I'll see you on the next deck guide. Take it easy. Later.